A four-dimensional cube is possible in computer software. Welcome to my new series on trying to solve it. Hey everyone, Andrew here. Today, I'm starting a new series on my channel. If you're watching this, I am assuming that you are a cuber, in which case you know how to solve the 3x3x3 three by three by three Rubik's Cube. But very few people have attempted the four-dimensional 3x3x3x3 hypercube. So that's what I'm going to be trying to solve in this new series on my channel, and I believe that this is the first time anyone has done a series like this on YouTube. I'm definitely not sure of that, but I did some searches and I couldn't find anyone that has a series like this, so I think that's pretty cool. Now this is episode zero, this is just going to be like an introduction video, I'm not actually going to be trying to solve it in this video, I'm just going to be kind of talking about what it is and how it compares to a standard three-dimensional cube. Obviously it is not physically possible to build a 3x3x3x3 three by three by three by three because we live in a three-dimensional world and building one would require four dimensions, but it is possible to simulate in computer software. So this is a free program that uh, I'll put the download link in the description in case anyone else is interested in checking it out. A regular 3x3 three three has six colors. This has eight colors, so it's more, but it's not astronomically more. Like, a four-dimensional Megaminx has 120 colors, which is completely ridiculous. But this has eight. Well, you're probably thinking you can only see seven. That's because of the way this is, the view, the angle that this is in, it's only possible to see seven colors at a time. So to see the eighth color, you have to do something like this. So this is like the equivalent of a cube rotation. But before we get into the actual moves, I want to just continue to compare this to a three-dimensional cube. So a three-dimensional cube has centers, edges, and corners. This has four types of pieces. So it has like, uh, I don't know if you can see in the, the very middle there of this blue, the very middle there's a piece, and that is like a core piece. And then there's a center, like here, and then an edge, and a corner. So centers on this puzzle actually have two faces, edges have three faces, and corners have four faces. So the next thing I want to talk about is, um, you can see as I'm moving my cursor around, uh, it's highlighting the uh, cube that my cursor is on, and also some other ones. That's because, like, that's the same, uh, it's like the same piece. So this green piece that my cursor's on, and then the light blue and the dark blue piece that are also highlighted, that's all one piece. And actually, in fact, you can't see from that angle, but if I go over here and then highlight it again, you can see the purple piece is also highlighted. So all four of these pieces here, the, f the four that are highlighted, are the same piece. Like I was saying, corners have four faces, that's, that's that, corners four faces. So then edges have three faces, so there's this blue one in the middle, then there's the darker blue up above, right here, and then there's this purple one. So all three of those are the same piece. And then for centers, uh, this is going to be harder to see because the angle, but like this piece right here, and then this piece are actually the same piece. Each of these individual cubes here is the equivalent of a sticker. So on a three-dimensional cube, the stickers are two-dimensional, on a four-dimensional cube, the stickers are three-dimensional. And each of these, like, three by three by three groups here of colors is the equivalent of a side. All right, now I'm going to talk about how this turns. There's three types of moves you can do. You can do face turns, like this. Here's another face turn. And then you can do edge turns, which are like that, or like that. Oh, it's kind of lagging must be because I'm recording. That could get annoying. But, okay, so yeah, so there's edge turns, and then there's also corner turns. I have not watched a tutorial on how to solve the puzzle, because I'm going to try to do that myself. 
I have watched a tutorial on how to use this software though and that tutorial said that you only need to bother with face turns the like edge turns and corner turns so like edge turns and corner turns you can just do do those with two face turns so when I do my solve I'm only going to be bothering with face turns this program does have a built-in algorithm thing so it's called macros in the, in this program an algorithm is called a macro which basically the way it'll work is like I can create a new macro and then do an algorithm and then like save that and whenever I'm doing and like when I'm doing the solve and whenever I want to use that algorithm I can just like click on the macro button and then it'll do that algorithm which is honestly very convenient one other thing I want to mention is um these settings here that lets you distort the puzzle so if I can if I do this and then this you can see it looks just like a standard three-dimensional three by three by three cube that we're all used to and you can do standard cube turns now those remember I was mentioning earlier face turns edge turns and center turns these are face turns and these correspond to regular turns that normal three-dimensional cubes can do now if you do an edge turn <laughs> if you do an edge turn or a corner turn those types of moves obviously are not possible on a regular 3x3 three three. <laughs> so yeah so this is just another way of looking at it I think using this view is gonna be helpful for coming up with algorithms like I could try doing some 3x3 three three algorithms here and then see what happens but I'm not gonna experiment with that stuff now the next episode episode 1 is going to be me um just experimenting with this like trying some moves and algorithms maybe trying to solve a face which would be one of these 3x3x3 three by three by three groups of colors well, this is gonna be an interesting and honestly really fun series I don't know if I'm gonna be able to solve this or not whether or not I succeed either way it's gonna be fun to try so yeah my next video is probably going to be a competition vlog I have a competition in about four or five days so yeah that video will be coming eventually I'm excited for this series um see you in the competition video bye